We have Iman Muhammad, Brian Cuthbert. We have performances from Muhammad Tala and Abed Al Kam. We have performances from Tala Alili and Sai. And we have Tala Alili, Blue Nile, and Molly May O'Leary. First up today, we have Zoe Lawler. Zoe is a Limerick native. She has been campaigning for Palestinian rights as part of the IPSC for over two decades. She has been a tireless and eloquent voice for Palestinian solidarity movement in Ireland. And I would like you to put your hands together for the IPSC National Chair, Zoe Lawler. Thank you. And we will not allow the narrative 
that this started a year ago or the racist media and political framing that holds Palestinians responsible for Israel's atrocities against them. And we commemorate and mourn the lost lives. The world watched Shaban al Dalu, a 19 year old student, burned to death while attached to an IV. But we never saw his life, his work for his family, his joy and his hopes. His mom, Allah, died in the fire with him and his brother, Abdul Rahman and sister Farah died a few days later. We have to remember and mourn the artist, Mahasin Al-Khatib, Ibrahim Abu Safiya, son of the director of Kamal Adwan Hospital, whose dad, Hassan, said, everything we have built, they have burned. They burned our hearts. They killed my son. Remember 10-year-old Rasha, who died alongside her brother Ahmed last month and who made a will leaving her clothes to people in need. And every person murdered in Gaza dies hungry, displaced and afraid. Say their names. They are not numbers. Grieve for them, but fight for everyone else to live. The US and the EU are showing us their extreme racism with their actions that say Palestinian lives and Lebanese lives don't matter. And we will never accept this racism, this justification for mass murder. They want us to believe that rights and freedom are for some people, but not for all. That international law means nothing when it comes to Palestinians. But we will not accept this. Genocide. They are the racists. They are the murderers. They are the suppliers of arms, money, political cover, and above all, 76 years of impunity. That means there is literally no crime Israel can commit that will trigger consequences. The current US administration and the next one are full and active partners in this genocide, and our government facilitates that because. We allow the US military to use Shannon Airport. We need to reclaim our so called civilian airport and we need to reclaim our neutrality. Because there will be a reckoning for every war criminal soldier who dressed in the clothes of their victims, who reveled in bombing homes, every one of them will see the dock for war crimes and there will be accountability. And one day too there will be a reckoning for every politician that participated in Israel's genocide of the Palestinian people. But not just them, also those who stood by and did nothing, those who offered words but no action, those who justified, those who enabled and those who denied. Every week, we hear of more flights carrying weapons to Israel going through our airspace. We hear that the journalists at the ditch have repeatedly warned our government about flights carrying munitions transiting through Irish airspace. But the government is doing nothing. And as a result, they are now facing two legal challenges from the ditch and from uplift. Fair play to them. Yesterday, ASL Airlines said their company won't carry munitions to the Middle East on their flights anymore. And this is a great victory. The protests are working. The pressure is working. So keep it up. And our government has to name these crimes. Denying that it is apartheid and genocide is a way to avoid sanctioning these crimes. And we will not tolerate that any longer. We are sick of endless words of concern and condemnation. It is meaningless unless it is turned into action. Only 
ready to be shelved again. They should have enacted the Occupied Territories Bill. That is the very bare minimum we could do to uphold international law. But it would represent the first ever trade sanction against Israel. It would be a crack in the wall. But the fact that they're even saying they will enact it if re-elected is a reflection of the work of many politicians, campaigners and of the people. And that means you, so keep pushing. For this election, let every politician know that Palestine is key for us. We want action and we won't be fobbed off with empty promises. We want sanctions now. We want them to enact the Occupied Territories Bill. Enact the Illegal Israeli Settlements Divestment Bill. Enact the Arms Embargo Bill. Thanks. 